speech by the late wing commander K. K. Majumda, D. F. C. and Bar, Royal Indian Air Force. May I begin by saying how very glad I am to present you this evening. The Indian Air Force display flight is travelling around India to meet young Indians, especially students, and to spread the doctrine of the air. The first question that comes to one's mind is why are so many officer pilots doing this instead of fighting against the enemy? The reason is that all the officer pilots of the display flight have recently spent many months in operations against the enemy and are now having a rest. They are utilizing this rest period to go round and meet the young men of India and to tell them something about the Indian Air Force. You will all remember the outbreak of the war more than five years ago. If you recall the events which have taken place since then and the general course of the war, you will find that the strategy of the war has been controlled by the balance of air power. It was air power which enabled the Germans to destroy the Polish state and the Polish army. It was air power which enabled them to fight a very successful campaign in Norway in the face of superior sea power. It was air power which led to the German victories in Western Europe and the destruction of the Allied armies on the mainland of Europe. Then came a bitter struggle for air power between the Luftwaffe and the Royal Air Force in the skies over Britain. The outcome was the defeat of the Germans in the air over England and the Channel. The loss of air power by the Germans meant that they could never launch an invasion of Britain. Similarly, in the Pacific, it was an overwhelming and unexpected concentration of Japanese air power which led to the destruction of a large part of the American fleet at Pearl Harbor. It was air power which enabled the Japanese to sink through British battleships in eastern waters. Having achieved air superiority, the Japanese were able to gather up Siam, Indochina, Malaya, the Dutch East Indies, the Philippines, Burma, and part of New Guinea, which fell into their hands like ripe fruit. On the Eastern European front, it was air power which enabled the German army to drive relentlessly into the heart of Russia. Then came a period when the Allies rebuilt and regrouped their air forces and put the cream of their engineering resources into them. After bitter fighting in the air, the Allies gradually built up air superiority over the enemy. And from air superiority, they developed air supremacy. The Allied air effort gradually equaled and then outstripped the enemy air effort until it became 5, 10, 20 times as great. That is why the Japanese never entered India. That is why the Germans were driven out of Africa. That is why the Allied armies were able to land successfully on the continent of Europe and drive the Germans out of France. That is why the Americans are back in Manila. And that is why the Russian armies are sweeping on into Germany. The lesson from this is that if India is ever to become a great nation, she must have air power. Air power must include a good air force, good air fuel, extensive commercial aviation, and a large aircraft industry. Above all, she must have good airmen and good leaders in the air. It takes weeks to build air teams, months to build airplanes, but it takes years to build leaders. That is why we are traveling around India and meeting the students. It is because we hope to find among you some of those men whom India will need in the future to lead and direct her air power. Every service benefits from good leaders, but for a fighting service, they are essential. The Indian Air Force has expanded much since the war, and our squadrons have done well against the enemy. But the limiting factor in our ability to expand and develop is a lack of young Indians with powers of leadership. Leadership requires qualities of initiative, character, energy, determination. We hope to find some among you with those qualities. We do not expect all of you to join the Air Force here and now. But if we have sown the seeds of air-mindedness in your hearts and minds, and if 
we find a few of those for whom we are seeking, we shall be satisfied. Flying is a strange and novel idea to many people, and those who wish to take it up as a career must face a great deal of opposition and prejudice in their homes. This alone calls for some of those qualities required of leaders. For those of you who are interested, a special officer has been deputed to offer information and advice. He is known as the IAS General Duties Recruiting Officer, and you can always get in touch with him at 22 Davis Road, Lahore. The Indian Air Force offers a happy life and a good career in a new field of human activity. But if any of you should come forward from those motives alone, I would not advise you to go further. You will be fundamentally unsuited to yourself. Those alone who seek to serve their nation out of a spirit of patriotism and adventure will find fulfillment in the air. Finally, I would like you to meet the officers of the Indian Air Force display flight when they come to your town. They have all been in combat against the Japanese. Some of their comrades are now dead. They have been killed by the Japanese. On the other hand, a great many Japanese are also dead. They have been killed by these young Indians. You will see that these officers are just like yourselves. They are of the same race and they have the same background. It is very encouraging to think that young Indians can do these things as well as any other young men in the world. What they have done, you can do, and I hope that someday I shall have the pleasure of serving alongside some of you.